These are my saltwater aquariums. I have three of them in my bedroom. The biggest one of them all being a 40 gallon aquarium and the two on the sides are 20 gallons each. In this video, I will be giving you an update on how these artificial coral reefs are doing. First of the three is the 40 gallon shallow reef tank. It is the oldest aquarium I own. It is creeping up on the two year mark. On November 1st, 2020, I uploaded the first video. It has been one hell of a ride. At the one year mark, I posted a compilation of what happened during its first year. Things like hair algae, flatworms, bubble algae, cyanobacteria were all part of the package, so to speak. If you're struggling, keep in mind that things will always get better. If I were to rate how happy I am with this setup as it is today, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it an 8. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way things are looking, but there's always room for improvement. Every few days, I have to skim off the surface using a surface skimmer. I had one in there before, but in less than a week, the skimmer would stop working properly due to saturated sponges or water evaporation. And overall, I didn't like the look of extra equipment in my aquarium. Another issue I keep having with this tank is the lack of nitrates and phosphates. You think that because there is no filtration on the tank, other than the surface skimmer every now and then, waste will build up fast. However, this is not the case. There are some fish in here that require to be fed daily, if not multiple times a day. Their waste also serves as nutrients for the corals, which there are plenty of in this aquarium. The corals are using too much too fast. So these fish aren't really meeting the need for nitrates and phosphates. Nitrates and phosphates are an essential source of food for the zoanthelle, found in the tissue of coral polyps. Without enough of it, corals will starve and eventually die off. This massive colony of candy cane corals is the perfect example of what a deficiency in nitrates and phosphates can do. It's becoming very white in color, how it used to be bright and yellow. I am trying to keep up with their needs by dosing nitrates and phosphates on a daily basis. However, I am thinking of adding more fish to this aquarium to meet their needs. Extra fish will basically make a mess in this tank, but that is exactly what I want. Do you have any fun suggestions for this aquarium? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Next up is the 20 gallon frag tank. It is the same height as the big aquarium, but it is shorter in length and depth. This aquarium used to be filled with over 100 coral frags. However, over the past few weeks we've sold so many, it is time to order new stock. We've sent 21 packages to customers around the European Union so far, including countries such as the Netherlands, Italy, Finland and Greece. We ship all across the European Union. I always wanted to have a mangrove plant. The beautiful mangrove bush at the Worldwide Coral Superstore in Orlando, Florida is a big inspiration. Some time ago, I purchased two mangrove seedlings from my local fish store. Unfortunately, the leaves dried up and eventually fell off. Luckily now, new leaves are growing. I find the coralline algae on the roots really nice. This is the only type of algae I want to see in my aquariums. As you may notice, my aquariums are a bit dirty at the moment. They require maintenance, but when I do a water change, I also take out the much needed nutrients. So instead of the normal weekly water changes of about 10%, I have now been doing water changes every two to three weeks. The goal is to keep the tank a little bit dirty. The corals seem to do way better that way. Most of these corals were grown on special coral farms. I am very excited to be able to sell my own coral frags now. My Senia soft coral and Kenia trees are growing really fast and that allows me to make coral frags of my own on a weekly basis. Speaking of soft corals, I decided to dedicate my other aquarium to soft corals only. 
I found some nice soft curl tanks online that really inspired me. Overall, soft curls are the easiest curls to keep and grow in an aquarium. Anyone can keep these as long as you have sufficient nitrates and phosphates. Soft curls use a lot of them. Earlier this year, this tank was overgrown with bubble algae. I added some emerald crabs to the aquarium and removed as many as I could by hand. Over a few weeks time, the crabs took care of the outbreak. They are amazing. In a few months, I think this will be one of my favorite tanks, since all these corals in here will grow very fast. I want to build a nice garden of soanthids and mushrooms. I may add some fun anemones in here, but first I'll need a Nemgar to avoid them getting caught in my powerhead again. Actually, speaking of anemones, I already have some in here. They are called Aptasia and are an unwanted pest commonly found in reef aquariums. You can get rid of these in multiple ways, either by introducing some newly branches to the aquarium, by adding peppermint shrimp, or by killing them using chemicals. This last method is what I've been using every now and then, since newly branches are hard to come by and I've had peppermint shrimp eat of my corals, which <laughs> no one wants. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my reef aquariums upstairs. Do you want to see an update on the 10 gallon nano reef tank I have downstairs? Make sure you hit the subscribe button to this channel and show your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching!